So for like three years now, there's been an elephant in the room. It is big, it is heavy, it is gray, and I think at some point in early quarantine, Mark tried to hunt it? I'm not really sure what the bow is doing here. Uh, anyway, for like three years, uh, this has just been collecting dust, and uh, it is now finally, at long last, time to eat the sleeping elephant. I might be mixing a metaphor there, doesn't matter. So the first couple of bites we took out of the elephant were moving the thing, which is actually how we met Devin, sort of, um, and then cleaning it up because it was covered in, in several years of, uh, of gunk. And then, oh, interesting side, uh, tracking down the uh, documentation on this one, uh, we contacted someone at Multicam, uh, whose customer service is really good, by the way, and what they ended up sending us was a, uh, a scanned PDF of this, which we ended up finding later on in our buckets of stuff. And apparently, Multicam's documentation for this machine is a scan of the actual manual, not for, just for this model, but for this actual machine, pencil notes and all. So. We thought that was interesting. So the first real step as far as uh, the complicated black box stuff is just getting a stepper motor to turn, which is both pretty complicated and actually in the end it turned out to be kind of simple. Uh, in fact, we've already taken this bite. So in going through all of the old stuff, uh, this is the original uh, control board, which has been replaced by just this which is USB and can actually talk to a modern computer. Uh, this is a driver for a stepper motor. Here's one of the old ones. Uh, this stuff is smaller, faster, simpler, and just better now. Uh, in fact, in the, uh, I guess, late 2000s, when we got our first CNC machine, uh, just buying the, uh, the slide tracks, getting those uh, ball bearing tracks replaced, it was like 60 or 80 bucks per, per slide. Now you can get like a two pack for 12 bucks off of Amazon. Uh, the parts have gotten a lot cheaper. To that end, this and all of this other stuff has basically been replaced by just this. And most of this box right here is just a 12 volt power supply that'll actually drive the steppers. So this right here is, yeah, Moore's Law. It's gotten faster, cheaper, better, uh, but we gotta talk to it, which, uh, I guess we'll, we'll go through now. We've got our stepper plugged in, and as you can see on this one, we have no idea what it is. But fortunately, he's got a brother, so we actually have some data on this little guy. Uh, we got uh, 1.4 volts and 7 amps, um, and based on the documentation we have for our, uh, our drivers, uh, the voltage that you are putting into the driver to actually drive the stepper should be between five and 25 times the rating on the stepper itself. Where they got those numbers, I have no idea, but they designed this thing, so I trust them. Uh, so that means uh, at 1.4, between like seven and 34 volts, uh, our power supply here is a 24 volt, seven amp, um, sorry, 50, uh, 24 volt, 15 amp. So with the power supply, we're gonna be driving two steppers. Um, so 15 is greater than seven. We're good to go on that one. Uh, stepper plugged into driver. Driver is getting power from the power supply and then connects over with these little three wires to the actual controller, uh, which once again, here's the old one from like only 20 years ago and much smaller, much cheaper. Um, this thing here is, uh, what are you? Um, this is a uh, Sane Smart 4-axis breakout. It is specifically designed to work with Mach 3, which we're probably gonna keep on using. Mach 4 is out. I've heard bad to mixed reviews about that. We'll do some more research as we put this together, but most likely gonna stick with Mach 3 as our actual run the machine control software. Um, and unlike our old machine, which uh, had to use a, a big old fat parallel cable to talk to the computer that had to be on the hardware side, a Windows 32-bit machine, which you can't even find anymore, that's so old. Uh, this guy can just plug USB into anything. Uh, so we can control our CNC machines off of a laptop or basically any desktop that has a USB, con uh, contract USB connector on it, which is all of them. Um, I don't have a cable long enough to go from here to a computer at the moment, so we're gonna cut and I'm just gonna make this thing dance for you.
So we got uh, our three wires connecting from the controller to the driver. Uh, one is for our five volt, one is for our uh, step direction, and the other four is the number of steps in that direction. And that's going to the driver, which is then going to go to our stepper. Uh, stunts provided by Selection so Speak Rum. Oh, wow. Yeah, nice. Oh. It's a good stunt, man. And just all of this computer and machinery to just spin a, a little drive doesn't really seem like much, but um, getting this far is actually a lot of what's been holding us up over the past couple of years in, in taking that first bite of, uh, of the pickled elephant in there. And now we have a taste for elephant, and, and I want more. So that is pretty much everything we need to electrically get uh, the stepper moving, which is actually quite a bit. Uh, from there, we need to get the spinning motion of this to transfer to lateral motion for the X, Y, and Z axes, which is where we're gonna have to deal with the fact that the previous owners, or I guess two owners back, uh, kind of abused this machine. Uh, these are a lot of the, uh, the, the drive stuff in the best shape that we have, and uh, yeah, a lot of these do not use it anymore. We have the, the shoulders and knees have been worn off entirely because this machine, I guess, was never calibrated right. Um, fortunately, a lot of these parts are still made and uh, we do have a, 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 a industrial motion place uh, pretty close to here. So we have some good leads on that one and we're gonna be diving into that uh, more mechanical bit next. Stay tuned and keep commenting because that'll actually shame us into finally eating this elephant.